So I worked with Brian Conroy in radio a few years back. He was on The Breakfast Show, but left radio to pursue a life as a legal eagle. But broadcasting has pulled him back and he's launched a new podcast called The Habit and he is on the line now. Hello, Brian. Hi, Claire. So why the fascination, Brian, with habits? I know you love broadcasting and you were always going to find something. Well, So why this subject? Um, the, really, it was because... Uh, I've always been into sort of productivity and uh, personal development and trying to get as much done as possible. Um, but I've always felt there was a piece missing from all of that for me. So I do all my to-do lists. I try all the new productivity apps and the new uh, ways of getting things done. And every time there was a new book, I would do it. But I still found that I was struggling to do things, to actually do them. Um, and then I started reading up on habits and it felt a little bit like the missing piece of a jigsaw for me. So I just got obs obsessed, might be a bit strong, but I just got really into it. And the more I learned about it, the more I thought other people need to know about this stuff because I wish I'd known about it a long time ago. Because it is something you hear a lot, particularly in health and wellness or personal development, the morning routine, the habits of successful people. And quite a lot of the time you'll find the successful people do the same thing. So what are those habits? I suppose it, it depends on where you look, Claire. That's one of the things I found most interesting about this. I've started searching in different places. So if you search on Google, you will get things like having a morning routine, meditation, exercise, uh, reading an awful lot, um, mindfulness, a gratitude practice. Those tend to be the kind of most common ones. Uh, and then the other big one is getting enough sleep. So those, if you Google, that's what you'll get. And then if you go into resources for, say, scientific uh, papers, it opens a whole other world of stuff and it gets far more scientific and far more, I don't know, nerdy, but uh, equally interesting, I guess, if you're into this kind of thing. And, and they're doing huge amounts of research. So when you look into it a bit more, you realize they're still only scratching the surface of it. So are we built, like we say we're creatures of habit, but are we? Are we built to take on new habits or break bad habits or is it an uphill battle? Uh, we are very much creatures of habits and um, what they've discovered. So one of the really interesting um, things, I spoke to uh, a lady called Professor Wendy Wood in the first real episode of the podcast. And I was really lucky to get her because she's spent 30 or 40 years researching habits and is the, the main authority on this. And I said to her, why am I only finding out about this now? And her response was because the technology is only capable of finding these things out. So they have to use fMRI imaging to uh, look the parts of the brain that are active in developing habits. And it turns out it's the really old part of the brain. So the, they've discovered that the uh, habit routines or the, the way the habits work in the brain is really basic. And so the, there's pros and cons to that. So to answer your question, we are hardwired to make them. Once we do have a habit, we never forget it. Breaking them can be very difficult, but once you understand how they work, it becomes a lot easier, which was what was really interesting to me. I was trying to break bad habits uh, or make new habits, but I had no understanding of how habits worked. So I was unintentionally handicapping myself in my efforts. So what is the secret? What is the big thing we all need to know? First of all, I'm not one of the um, scientists, but to paraphrase what they tell me, effectively, the, the habit uh, formula really comes down to uh, repetition, but in circum certain circumstances. So there's a couple of different variations on this, depending on which popular book you read. But it, it re really basically works as there's a cue and that can be an environmental cue, like you walk past a shop or it can be a physical, uh, emotional, internal cue, like you're feeling stressed. And in the past, when you've experienced that cue, you've done a certain thing and that's your response and you've been rewarded in a certain way. Uh, and the primitive brain that the habits work in go, that was good. We should do that more often. And so the next time you uh, encounter the same circumstance, you do the same thing. And so the habits, as the science understands it, is more about automaticity, which is, I think, a word you're going to start to hear more of um, in the next kind of five or 10 years. But it's this automatic response to a given set of circumstances. And it just helps 
brain resources be diverted other places because you don't need to use those resources to do the habit. And how long does it take to make or break a habit? Controversial, Claire. Controversial. So most people will tell you 21 days. Some people will tell you 66 days. And technically neither is really true, but 21 days is definitely not true. So th- this is one of those weird facts that nobody really knows where it came from. A lot of people attribute it to a plastic surgeon, I think in the 30s, who uh, developed this theory that it took his patients about 21 days after they had plastic surgery to uh, habitualize how they looked or how they felt. And it, it just took hold from there. But there's no science behind it whatsoever. Um, And in fact, the science that does exist was undertaken by another guest that I have on the podcast early in the year called Professor Pippa Lally. And she found that on average, it takes about 66 days. It depends on what the habit is you're trying to make or break. And then there's some other external forces. So like how badly do you want the habit has a bearing on it as well as that. But 66 days in her research is about the average, which is disappointing, frankly. I know we've been lied to by a plastic surgeon of all people. And what are the major pitfalls then that trip people up when they're either trying to take on a a new good habit in inverted commas or break a bad one? Uh, I think the biggest um, thing that gets people is that they just don't know enough about how habits work to what you're trying to do is make it as easy for yourself and particularly that primitive part of your brain as possible. So one of the really counterintuitive things that I've learned on this journey and through the podcast so far is that you try to design your environment to make it easier for you. So what I I talked earlier about these cues. So if you have a cue that results in a particular habit, you just try and avoid the cue. It's quite counterintuitive because you think that how much you want it or how good or bad your willpower is, has a really strong bearing on whether you're going to achieve this thing you've set out to achieve. But actually it doesn't. And you'd be far better off focusing on your environment, like taking away the cues that are resulting in in the habits. So that to me was like, I don't like the fact that my willpower isn't strong enough to do this. But what the science says is, forget that. There's no, this isn't about it being hard. It's about making it as easy as possible. So yeah, that's the really interesting thing. What about the topic of accountability? How important is that in sticking to our healthy habits? Uh, it Well, very is the short answer. So the research again shows that if you have what is called an accountability partner, I don't really like the name, but I haven't been able to come up with another. <laughs> Can we um, not just call them friend? Yeah, yeah. No, accountability partner is an interesting one, though, because it is someone to keep you honest and keep you on track. And at a very basic level, if you decide to go running and you have a friend who uh, decides to go running with you, you probably we've all experienced this thing where it comes to the time you have to go for the run and you go, oh, I don't want to go for the run. But because the other person is going to be waiting at the end of the road at whatever time it is, you have to go. If that person isn't there, then you might just say, do you know what, I'll do the run tomorrow or I'll do whatever it is. And um, so it's really important. And what the science again is showing is that uh, a lot of the time now um, people are using social media for their accountability partners. So, for example, when I was speaking to Georgie Crawford about this, she started her 100 day squat challenge at the very start of her uh, journey to try and um, develop healthy habits. And she said that was specifically to put herself out there and have eyes on her so that she couldn't skip a day or fail. And she didn't skip a day. But finding the right accountability partner is important as well. Particularly, I think most people tend to look to their partner first. But in my personal experience, that has uh, not worked out great because my wife didn't want to be the fun police. So in all the things that I need an accountability partner for are all the things that are enjoyable, drinking too much wine or eating too much food or doing that kind of thing. So trying to find the right one as well. Uh, and that's part of what I'm doing is developing a community specifically for people who are just looking for like minded people who are trying to establish the same habits. It sounds like you married a good woman there. My husband, I'm sure, would swap in an instant. I'm often the fun police with everything that you've learned from your guests, from the experts. Has it changed you and your habits? Uh, 
Uh, yes, it has. It, in a couple of odd ways, I, I spoke, uh, and this is going to sound like the most boring conversation in the world, but I promise it actually wasn't. I spoke for an hour to um, a doctor of psychology in Glasgow who has done research specifically on the habits of hydration and how people don't drink enough water. And a, a byproduct of this is I'm hydrated properly for the first time in my entire life. And there was a whole process to go through. If you've never really drank water your whole life to start and make it a habit was a big palaver. But that's been a big change. And then the second one, and this is Keith Barry's fault. Keith Barry told me that there's lots of indisputable science that a, a cold shower is good for you. And then I started looking at this guy, Wim Hof, who's bonkers whatever so now i have a cold shower every day which even as i'm saying it i'm like why am i doing that anyway but that's what i do so i have a hot shower and then at the end of it for two or three minutes completely cold and I, yeah it's i never ever thought i would do that two water-based habits i love it and you know what i actually do both as well so welcome to the club you can find the habit wherever you get your podcasts and for more go to habits.ie 